let's start guys thank you for joining us today once again uh, my name is alex i'm representative of ezmm team and today we have ama session with the project called meter.io and uh, its founder uh Xiao Han. and today also one of the speaker is our chief at ezmm uh daniel hey guys Hey, hey. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Hi, Alex. Thanks a lot for this invitation. Thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you. Same here. Okay. Yeah, great to share about uh, Meter with the uh, EZMM community. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I will ask you several questions if you don't mind uh, regarding of the project. Uh, yeah, please. Can you just give us briefly the idea, the purpose of creating the Meter.io project? Uh, sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Xiao Han Zhu, uh, one of the co-founders for Meter.io. We started the project uh, uh, back in 2018. Uh, initially, we set out as a, a, a meta-stable coin to complete uh, Satoshi's original vision of uh, uh, sound money independent of the fiat system. Um, however, once we start working on the project, we quickly realized we have to tinker the uh, consensus layer. So we ended up uh, to create a, a new blockchain, a EVM compatible blockchain uh, that's using the state of the art uh, consensus protocol called uh, HOSTOP2. Um, Right now, the network is live. Um, it uh, has uh, more than 320 consensus nodes from the community. Um, Ethereum compatible and also have some unique features like front running resistant and also uh, the stable coin I mentioned uh, initially, um, basically uh, a proof of work based uh, stable coin that has a long term economic equilibrium. Um, yeah, so that's uh, the story when about uh, the about the project, and uh, yeah, we've been working on that. Uh, the mainnet has launched uh, for the last uh, three years. Right now, our focus is more growing the ecosystem and uh, growing the uh, the user base, and uh, we have a lot of other things uh, that we're working on. Um, for example, bring up. Uh, uh, Bitcoin connections uh, to provide an L2 solution for Bitcoin and also uh, our consensus engine can be shared uh, among uh, different projects and uh, providing a robust infrastructure or like robust code base for a lot of layer 1 and layer 2 projects that try to be decentralized. Uh, for example, recently we've been talking with uh, Cosmos to use uh, our consensus engine as an alternative for the existing uh, Cosmos uh, uh, Comet uh, BFT, which is already um, kind of nine years old already. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, about meter on the high level. Thank you for this answer. It was uh, really detailed, and uh, maybe let uh, let us give uh, Daniel some time for some words. Daniel, I will use us. Yeah, sure. First of all, I would like to welcome everyone again. And also, I would like to remind that uh, we have a fascinating uh, giveaway today. So we will give uh, 100 meter tokens today for five lucky winners. Uh, but don't forget to follow EZMM, follow Meta Ecosystem, and uh, be here so this free tasks for you guys and someone can be a bit richer today so yes uh, once again and yeah um, I really glad to hear about uh, meter project and I have one question like uh, there are a lot of layer one solutions so what is the idea and uh, what differentiate you from others uh, yeah, so I think uh, when we started the meter, uh, initial goal was to create a like independent uh, 
some money independent of the fiat system. So we put the decentralization at uh, like one of the highest priority. And the other one is obviously performance. So like with the new consensus protocol we put in, we basically uh, is probably the best trade-off between decentralization and performance uh, uh, in the entire uh, like uh, blockchain uh, space. So right now, uh, we have like more than 320 consensus nodes and actually scalable to like tens of thousands. Um, and uh, we can process uh, thousands of uh, transactions per second. It's actually uh, only limited by the uh, Ethereum virtual machines uh, scalability. Um, so that's on the decentralization versus performance side. And also, um, we took a very unique... Uh, uh, basic stance regarding to fairness. Um, for example, if you look at uh, uh, Ethereum today, uh, there is something called MEV or uh, front running. So if you trade in DeFi protocols or DEXs, you're probably aware of this. Um, so uh, when you place a big trade, a bot or someone else may try to front uh, your transaction and make a profit of it. So this is obviously illegal in uh, centralized, uh, I mean, in traditional stock exchanges, for example. Uh, if you do that, you go to jail. But uh, to people's surprise, I mean, these type of behavior is actually encouraged in the DeFi space, in the uh, um, Ethereum like ecosystem, which we don't believe is fair for the users. And uh, we actually... Uh, putting special designs in the meter, um, uh, in the meter blockchain. So even we are still Ethereum compatible, supporting all the DeFi applications, or front running resistance. Um, so meaning like uh, you won't have to concern about people try to take advantage of your transaction when you trade on the meter blockchain. And uh, finally, um, we have that. Uh, uh, Meta stable token we promised uh, to deliver uh, like when we started. So it's created by proof of work, have a long term uh, stable equal, uh, equal economic equilibrium. So the user, we are using this currency as the uh, gas uh, token in the meter blockchain. So it ensures your tr uh, transaction fees are not long, no, not only low, but also stable over time. So I think that's one of the few unique uh, things about uh, Meter. Yeah, sounds really interesting, especially with this gas fees uh, idea. And also, you mentioned a lot of decentralization. So here, I would like to know what are the key benef benefits of uh, using uh, MTRG coin? And uh, is it some kind of governance? And also, how can people contribute to growth and sustainability of uh, your ecosystem? Yeah, so um, Meter actually have uh, two tokens. Uh, the first one is the uh, Meta stablecoin I mentioned. It's called MTR. So we use it as a gas in the system. Uh, the circulation is completely uh, decided by economics. If there are more users in the uh, blockchain needing more gas, it will be created by the miner. If uh, no additional uh, gas is needed, uh, then the miner will like uh, stop uh, uh, mining and will just using existing circulations. Um, we have uh, another Im really important token that's uh, probably is uh, more uh, focused on the trading and uh, investment side. It's our governance token called MTRG. So this token is actually used uh, to secure the network. So Meter have a hybrid uh, consensus. Uh, we use a proof of stake to secure the ledger and create the high performance system. Uh, the proof of work is only used to create the, the meta stable coin. So MTRG is that uh, staking token uh, for proof of stake. So basically it means uh, you can uh, use the MTRG uh, stake the MTRG to create the validators in the network. And uh, if you don't know how to start a validator, you can, uh, for example, delegate your MTRG, stake it and delegate it to uh, other people. 
Uh, and also, we right now have uh, liquid staking. Uh, we have, uh, or also leveraged uh, uh, liquid staking if you uh, use uh, some of the uh, lending protocols uh, in the uh, ecosystem. So, uh, in order to contribute uh, to the meter ecosystem, obviously, MTRG is uh, the most important uh, token. So, yeah, so on the high level, you can stake it, you can run validator, you can participate uh, using, I mean, in our uh, DeFi applications uh, created by community. There's a bunch of them already, including like DEXs, perp trading, uh, lending borrowing, um, synthetic assets, yeah, you name it. Okay, I see. That's a really interesting concept when you combine two uh, proof models, uh, which are really have proven record, and we know Bitcoin with proof of work, we know Ethereum, which was on proof of work and now in proof of stake, and you combine these two ideas in one concept. That's really interesting. And also, um, uh, like, uh, creating L1 blockchain is not only about just created, it's more about ecosystem. Do you know, and maybe can you share with us some examples of successful projects or use cases that were built on uh, Matter ecosystem and uh, also uh, maybe some examples of real-world use because now we see that uh, there is a real trend of RWA uh, tokenization and uh, implementing blockchain in some real businesses, real life. So can you share with us some successful cases? Uh, yeah, so uh, our blockchain have uh, like several, I mean, uh, the ecosystem has consi uh, consists of like uh, multiple uh, categories of applications. For example, DeFi applications, uh, you can go to like uh, Symmetrix for, it's a balancer fork. Uh, RoadSwap is uh, like a VU33, solidly VU33 fork. Lending borrowing, there's a uh, Meridian land, there's a uh, Sumer money. Um, perp trading, there's a Tigris uh, trade. And I believe the uh, Meridian guys is launching uh, perp trading decks uh, soon as well. Uh, on the uh, uh, gaming side, uh, there's a very active uh, developer uh, called uh, Business Builder. So they have, they have been building like some really awesome 3D uh, MMA type of uh, games. Uh, there's also other like a uh, uh, play to earn type of games like uh, Dragon Master, Crypto Blade, um, and there are other applications like NFT uh, tradings. Um, like there are various collections uh, created uh, on the Meter blockchain as well. Uh, in terms of uh, RWA. Um, I think we're still at the early stage. Uh, we've been talking about uh, with uh, several like uh, RWA partners about uh, 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 issuing on the meter blockchain. But I think uh, the RWA space, uh, for example, right now is more like uh, focusing on creating like a stable coin that can get yield um, uh, with the U.S. Treasuries um, or like. Uh, uh, tokens representing like gold, silver, those are commodities and issuing them on the blockchain. It's more about the issuance. And a lot of the issuer, um, the liquidity for them is actually still pretty low, uh, even on the Ethereum mainnet. <coughs> so we're still um, like discussing and uh, try to monitor which uh, RWA project is more uh, like reliable. Uh, in terms of methodology, because uh, essentially for RWA project, uh, the issuer is taking custody of your uh, your of your funds. So there's a lot of uh, uh, security and uh, custodian concerns there as well. So we are really careful about uh, like choosing which partners to to work with. And uh, right now, I would say is still like uh, in the uh, exploration phase. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think there are a lot of things projects need to solve before real-world uh, asset tokenization will be mass uh, adoption, will have mass adoption. But <clears throat> I also would like to know, so 
you mentioned some really interesting cases uh, how people use your ecosystem. Do you have any kind of incentive program for developers and uh, how how you uh, yes so yeah, yeah. community? I guess the question is about what kind of uh, incentive programs we have for the developer community. Um, yeah, so right now we have a like a grant program. Um, it's uh, and also have a like a TVL incentive program. So the TVL incentive program is more like targeted towards like DeFi type of applications. So we provide uh, like a token grant to projects uh, on a monthly basis to projects that based on. Uh, the TVL and the uh, the type of uh, TVL they have, uh, the annualized uh, um, like uh, incentive um, basically uh, is around uh, seven point five uh, seven point five to ten percent, I believe, uh, to these uh, projects based on the TVL in the protocol, and uh, the developer can use the uh, incentive to uh, attract uh, users such uh, basically. Retain the users uh, on the on the application, or even uh, extend the runway for the team uh, themselves. Um, and our grant program is basically uh, obviously when you start the project uh, on the meter blockchain, uh, you are facing the issue of how to code start the project. So we have some initial like user growth grant. We can help you to um, attract the. Uh, uh, the initial user base. Uh, there's also depends on application. There may be some deployment uh, grant as well. So basically, we're trying to like uh, work with project on various phases, both uh, at the starting, uh, launching, and also growing and retaining the user, a uh, different uh, phase to help the uh, developer to be successful on the blockchain. Okay, so it's great to know that you support uh, some developers. And uh, do you have maybe kind of some kind of hub in any country, like in the US, or maybe in some um, developing countries? Uh, do you think about that or not? Uh, uh, are you talking about the physical hubs? Right now, we don't really have a like a physical hub because the team is uh, decentralized. Uh, but uh, like our user base, I think is uh, also pretty decentralized. Uh, there are people in Europe, North America, uh, or like uh, Asia. I mean, yeah, I think it's pretty spread out. Um, we uh, host uh, like uh, virtual hackathons uh, from time to time. For example, right now we have one hackathon uh, currently uh, uh, going on with the. Uh, the Builder Box team, they are originally the uh, uh, Gitcoin team, uh, the, the hack uh, the hackathon team for uh, Gitcoin. So this is an uh, ongoing hackathon uh, that uh, will end, uh, uh, I believe, the end of uh, June. So there is uh, $25,000 uh, uh, $25, worth of uh, MTRG allocated as uh, incentives or prizes. For the uh, for the hackathon winners, and also there will be additional uh, growth grant uh, and TVL grant for users. I mean, for, for developers uh, that uh, launching a meter from these uh, hackathons. So, yeah. So that's uh, what we're uh, trying to scale on the developer front. Thank you for covering this question, and I, I don't know if you guys feel the enormous amount of work uh, that have been done here with Meta Project. I'm quite impressed, and uh, I'd like to ask, ask you next question. Please, uh, can you elaborate if you had any challenges? Of course you had, but can you just give us some examples of what you had and uh, what was the problems you faced uh, when you were building the project? Yeah, I mean, the challenge is obviously, like, uh, right now, the crypto space is uh, very noisy. Uh, you have to fight with other projects' um, uh, attentions. And uh, we've been, uh, I mean, as a project uh, that uh, launch, uh, I mean, when we launch, uh, 
like uh, we didn't immediately launch on the biggest exchange. Uh, so that obviously uh, introduces some like challenges in uh, attracting uh, users and traders and volumes. And uh, I think that's a problem we're continuously trying to improve uh, and also uh, trying to help the user to get uh, easier on board and uh, on ramp and off ramp for the blockchain. Uh, for example, we worked uh, with uh, multiple bridge uh, uh, providers and also like uh, help uh, providers that can help the user to get the initial gas. Um, and uh, yeah, I think the, moving forward, uh, I think one of the most important thing is to build a community that's uh, uh, basically a core community that uh, believe in the project and uh, uh, want to see the project successful and uh, like create a great uh, communication uh, among the community and trust among the community uh, to uh, bring the uh, uh, project to the to the next phase. <coughs> well, thank you for covering this question also, and uh, I guess. Uh we can move to our next part, and uh, it's especially it's a community part. We uh, chose uh, some questions from the community uh, who asked us uh, the, this question during the last week. And uh, the first questions, uh, of course, some of them might repeat, and you may have already answered some of them, but uh, let me maybe cover it once again. So mm -hmm. our first question is, uh, when comparing Meter to other L1 blockchains, what are the key considerations for developers looking to build the app? Uh, yeah, if the question is uh, more about uh, how for developers, I think the developers uh, first need to look at, uh, for example, what kind of programming language uh, the, the blockchain support, uh, whether they can leverage existing uh, like code from other projects or like a, a well a well vetted project uh, that has proven uh, security uh, in the space. And the other thing is uh, like how well the infrastructure uh, is provided uh, on the blockchain. Uh, for example, is it uh, secured by uh, a lot of uh, people from the community? I mean, people. I mean, like a validator knows. Uh, or is just one single server running all the transactions. So different things may provide a different level of security to the users. And obviously there's uh, uh, speed and uh, uh, the speed and the cost issue for running the, the transactions. I think uh, we're doing pretty well on that front. I mean like transactions uh, meters are like finalized uh, within seconds and when I, when I mean finalized that means uh, uh, I mean for example on a certain blockchain uh, there are more maybe forks uh, happening so your uh, transaction is not finalized until uh, maybe like 10 15 minutes uh, but uh, a meter blockchain is uh, uh, immediate everything in the blockchain is fully confirmed and uh, we can handle thousands of transactions per second with uh, very low transaction cost, low and stable transaction cost. Um, and in terms of infrastructure, uh, we provide uh, everything developer needs. For example, uh, multi say graph nodes, uh, bridges, and uh, verified uh, uh, smart contract explorers, uh, things like that, yeah. Yeah, as, uh, as I told uh, you before, I'm really impressed with the amount of work you've, you've done here, and we are so glad to have you as a, our partner. Uh, and by the way, we have uh, such an activity uh, with our listeners today. Maybe we can give uh, some time uh, to, to let them ask your question directly. Don't, uh, do you mind this? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, the first one here will be uh, Skylar. Are you with us, Skylar? Can you? 
ask the question you wanted to ask. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, so my question is uh, like, uh, 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 is there any audit done? How secure and safe uh, protocol you have? Uh, yeah, so th there's different type of audit, uh, I think, uh, important for the users. Uh, first, I mean, the, the uh, layer one blockchain itself is audited. Yes, we are audited, uh, like, uh, yeah, several times uh, in the past. Uh, but uh, I think when you uh, interact with the applications on the blockchain, uh, you should be always uh, be uh, interested in whether the applications are audited. So, uh, that in that case, you have to check the application on a case by case basis. Uh, all the applications we developed on the blockchain are uh, audited, uh, and also like uh, when we give grant uh, to like any DeFi applications, we make sure they are audited uh, as well uh, to make sure uh, like uh, their applications are safe for the users to use. Uh, yeah, but still, I think. Uh, Depend on which applications you are interacting with, you need to check it uh, on a case by case basis. Okay, that's Thank you so much. Very informative. Uh, okay, our next listener uh, who can ask your question is Alexa. Alexa, are you with us? I'm available. Yes. Okay, my question is, what are your marketing strategies and how do you plan on implementing global adoption? Thank you. Um, yeah, I think this uh, question is very general. So, like, uh, we I mean, have a, uh, our CMO who could uh, probably best answer this question. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think the focus is to build a community that has trust and uh, loyal and uh, believe in the project and philosophy. Um, so to build that tight community to uh, make sure the project can success. And uh, the community obviously is should be global. Right now, for example, our community is, is very globalized. And if you look at the uh, people who like interact with our social media, I mean, they are from a very a uh, wide uh, uh, space, uh, including like North America, Europe, uh, Asia, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I guess we can move to the next listener, it's Tokyo. Tokyo, please go ahead. I think she's new. Hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah so yeah, I, we know, can hear you. Yeah, I just want to know, um, in terms of an ambassador's program, do you have an ambassador's program? Uh, users could participate in uh, Currently, we don't have an explicit uh, ambassador program, but we have communities uh, in different languages, uh, and they're like uh, sort of an uh, ambassador who help... Uh, like, uh, for example, translating contents and, uh, uh, like, coordinate uh, those uh, different language uh, uh, telegram groups. But uh, we're definitely looking at the various design of the ambassador programs to make sure uh, we can leverage the community. Response. All right, and the next one gonna be Hanabi. Hey, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can go ahead. Yeah. Uh, three more questions. Uh, what's meta dot IO plan to attract more developer on your blockchain? And currently, do you run any grant program for developers? 
Uh, yeah, I think I mentioned this earlier. We have a like a grant program for developers. It consists of a TVL grant, uh, which uh, gives a seven point five to ten percent uh, annualized uh, incentive for uh, applications that have uh, TVLs. Uh, there is also like a user growth grant for helping uh, applications to start on the network, and also depends on. The application there may be some deployment grant as well. Oh God! Uh, and I guess we have a little time for two, three more questions. And the next one uh, will be from Rosie. Rosie, can you go ahead? Rosie, are you with us? Hi. Hi. Yes, Rosie, please. Yeah, uh, please. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, my question: How can you become a validator? Uh, sorry. How uh, you could become what? Could you repeat the question? Alex, did you hear your question? question? Uh, no, no, I don't hear. I don't hear. Uh, uh, my question, how can uh, we become a validator? Oh, how to, you can become a validator? Uh, yeah, so as long as you have uh, 2,000 uh, MTRG token, so based on the current market price, it's uh, maybe like 2200 or 2300 uh, You can start a validator node. And uh, right now we have a, like an incentive program. So if you start a validator, uh, uh, the Meter Foundation will delegate uh, uh, 22,500 uh, uh, MTRG tokens uh, to your node, meaning you can uh, earn a commission from the staking rewards of those tokens. That gives you about like 20% uh, APR um, based on the, uh, uh, yeah, uh, on your like a staked uh, MTRG token. Okay, thank you. Sounds pretty reasonable to me, doesn't it? So let's move on and uh, the next uh, listener who will ask his question is Jackson. Jackson, can you go ahead? Yes. All right, thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity. Okay, I would like to ask, what are the security measures in place to protect Vitaz Network from attacks and ensure the integration of his data? Thank you. Uh, sorry, could you repeat uh, your question? I didn't really, like... Hear it clearly. Okay. I said, what are the security measures in place to protect Meta's network from attacks and ensure the integration, the integrity of its data? Thank you. Uh, if you're talking about uh, like uh, data protection, I think uh, that's uh, how the blockchain is designed. So basically, every uh, validator node uh, in, a, in the meter network uh, has uh, full replications of all the data. So that means that if there are more nodes or validators running the network, uh, your data integrity level or protection level will be higher. So right now we have uh, 320 uh, validators. They're all from the community. We we are only running like three validators ourselves. So the rest are all from the community, uh, which uh, ensures uh, is enough uh, uh, decentralization and protection for your data and transactions. And uh, obviously on the application level, uh, the applications need to be like audited and uh, secure as well. Uh, that uh, need to be checked on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, as I mentioned earlier. All right, uh, two more questions from the audience. And the next goes, uh, let me check. It 
it's river x can you go ahead please hello can you hear me yes we can hear you uh, okay so my question is uh, how do you plan to retain long-term investors and what are the benefits of retaining them are you planning to move to another blockchain in the future or launch your mainnet that's my question uh first uh, the project is already fully launched since uh, we are a layer one blockchain so uh, we don't have to migrate to other blockchains uh, we will build more connections to other blockchains uh, through bridges uh, for example we have a bitcoin secure decentralized bitcoin bridge uh, that supports like bitcoin brc20 and other ordinals that's uh, in the making um, and uh, oh, sorry, what was the early question again? Uh, Alex, do you remember uh, his earlier question? So we are he asked, yeah, he asked how you do you plan to retain investors? Oh, yeah. oh, retain investors, yeah. So we have the uh, the staking program, basically like uh, if you run a validator, uh, you can get additional delegations uh, from the uh, foundation, give you about like 20% APR. You can also like uh, stake your MTRG token to other validators. That gives you around 9 to 10% APR. Uh, there's also like DeFi applications that you can leverage in the ecosystem um, and uh, allow you to um, get uh, liquid staking, leverage liquid staking. Um, so that can give you, I think, 15 to 20 percent APR as well. So, yeah, various uh, schemes that uh, can help the uh, uh, token holders to get uh, yield. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the answer. Uh, I have another question. Can I ask? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Yeah. So. Uh, how can I buy and sell uh, MTRG tokens in the market to raise capital for your project? Uh, yeah, so right now, uh, MTRG tokens are listed uh, on uh, KuCoin, Gate.io, and MEXC. Also, uh, it's traded uh, on various DEXs. For example, if you use BSC, it's trading it traded on uh, uh, PancakeSwap. Uh, it's a bridged version to like uh, BSC. And if you come to the meter mainnet, uh, there are various uh, 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 DEXs as well, like uh, Boswap, Symmetrics. Uh, if you're using base blockchain, it's also EMTRG is traded on your And by the way, it's look like a good opportunity to buy right now because the price is rebounding. Uh, price level now is very interesting to buy. I hope Daniel will not be killed in a kindergarten. <laughs> All right, and we're moving to our last question from the audience, and it's going to be GR with a board ape. Please go ahead. All right, yeah, um, thank you so much. So my question now to the team is uh, about the, the chain. Is it is it NFT compatible then also? Has any um, bug bounty or hacking been done to ascertain their security or to ascertain the, if there's any vulnerability in the meta, meta chain? Uh, yeah, so the blockchain is uh, like uh, Ethereum compatible. So that means uh, like it uh, inherits uh, all the uh, security designed uh, into the EVM itself. Uh, in terms of like uh, bug bounties, uh, and uh, other platforms. So we have several, we work with several bug bounty platforms, like for example, Hats Finance, uh, Bug Wrap. So there are uh, like uh, things over there, like uh, you can submit uh, uh, bugs uh, to the uh, to the platforms. Um, and uh, and also the applications uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the platforms as well. And obviously like, uh, 
you can always re reach out directly to the teams uh, regarding to any issues uh, you find. All right, yeah, thank you so much. I'm so sex to be team. Thank you. Thank you guys uh, for your questions. And uh, we are moving to the very last ones, two questions that we collected before during this week. Uh, and uh, yeah, next question from goes from uh, Mike. And he asks, uh, how will established L1 blockchains like Ethereum adapt and compete with newer, more scalable L1S and layer two solutions? Um, I guess uh, like uh, the question is more like uh, about uh, the competition in the space in general. Uh, yeah, right now there's a trend is like everything is, uh, uh, or like uh, every project is trying to launch its uh, own chain. Uh, with the uh, uh, Ethereum L2 uh, type of solution. Um, I think one of the things uh, that uh, uh, that's important is uh, like what, it, what are the unique things uh, you bring to the table. Um, I think a lot of L2s are just playing different games of uh, attracting uh, bootstrapping liquidity so they can get listed on exchanges, uh, things like that. But uh, the token itself it's very similar to, I think, during the early day, uh, during the early days of DeFi, there are like DEX tokens that just uh, used to attract uh, liquidity in the beginning. So the L2s are playing the same game, uh, except the uh, those uh, tokens are basically not really used for in any sense um, in the uh, in the blockchain. So I don't I don't think uh, that trend will. Uh, last uh, a long time. Right now, we already see people uh, looking back to like unique L ones uh, instead of like L twos. Um, but uh, I think uh, in general, it's still like uh, what are the unique contributions you can make to the uh, community and uh, the industry, and also the token holders, of course. All right, and I, I guess the next the next and the last one question will uh, conclude our conversation in a good way. And uh, Bill asks you, what are the most innovative features of layer one blockchains that you believe will drive mainstream mass adoption of blockchain technology? I think uh, right now, like the how to drive uh, mass adoption is still like a big question for the entire industry. Uh, with the Bitcoin ETF and also maybe like the Ethereum uh, ETF in the near future, uh, I think that will attract a lot of new uh, users into the space and start exploring cryptocurrencies. Uh, but I think at core, um, all the proven successful case for blockchain is still finance related. Basically, anything related to uh, asset tokenization trading of these assets and uh, uh, basically how to make use of these assets are uh, still going to the main theme, uh, going to be the main theme driving the, uh, the space forward. Um, I think that may be already enough. Uh, it is, because blockchain is uh, more costly, their decentralized system is going to be always more costly than decentral I mean, a centralized system. So that cause basically should bring like uh, fairness, uh, censorship resistance, and uh, other benefit to the user uh, to uh, attract uh, the users and uh, fundings. And finance, uh, decentralized finance is uh, obviously a very important thing uh, that really attracts the users. And uh, uh, I believe that uh, still gonna be like uh, the thesis uh, moving forward. But uh, eventually, will uh, create a massive adoption. Thank you, Sir Han, for these very detailed answers. We appreciate we appreciate your time here. And yeah. uh, thanks a lot uh, for. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can uh, can you tell us uh, maybe 
one question that you liked the most uh, from this? Maybe any questions that you remember and you liked it very much? Um, I think I like uh, Daniel's uh, original questions, like uh, what are the unique things about meter, right? I think that's uh, that's a great question. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But, but yeah, we, we need to pick up some questions from the community. Uh, from the community, I think, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, let me see. Um, the, uh, the developer incentives? Question? I forgot who asked that uh, question, yeah. Yeah, we will just uh, find out later after the... AMA yeah. session and uh, those uh, who question uh, who questions will be rewarded, we will uh, connect with you. No worries mm -hmm. afterwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Sevahan. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you here. It was a really nice topic, and uh, hope everyone uh, has some new knowledge from today's AMA session. Looking forward to a new one and see you soon. Yeah, thanks a lot uh, for Alex and Daniel for hosting the AMA. And thank you everyone for your time to uh, listen to the AMA and asking all the great questions. Yeah, thank you guys. It was a pleasure to talk today with you, Sam Hein. And yeah, well, let's keep it at the traditional. Maybe we can catch up again in a couple of months and discuss what are the next few big things you did in your blockchain and ecosystem. So thanks again and see you guys. Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye.